Hey, my name's Eleanor. Today I'm going to be discussing the original eight Artemis Fowl novels in order from worst to best. Or, oh, well, I suppose in case of this series, mediocre to absolutely perfect. <laughs> in eighth place, we have book seven, The Atlantis Complex. I kind of consider this one to be the weakest link because it's basically a side quest um, and there's, you know, I'm not entirely sure I, I'm not fully qualified to, not fully qualified, I'm not at all qualified to discuss or diagnose semi-fictional mental health issues in entirely fictional characters. But, um, it's an interesting story. It's definitely, definitely not the strongest. In seventh place, we have book eight, The Last Guardian. I have very mixed feelings about The Last Guardian because I actually honestly have mixed feelings about basically the second half of the series. I have mixed feelings about The Last Guardian because it, it, it very much takes sort of an established world and is like, let's have this, but also let's just chuck in like an entire couple of tons of extra lore and characters and situations. And, um, <laughs> it very much feels like a, a speed run of book two and book four if they were the same story at the same time but it takes the setups from book six and it's just um with opal as a character each time she appears she has to just escalate it and escalate it and escalate it because she's the best villain in the series and she's a really complex character but by the time we get to book eight it's like well let's make her an actual God, I guess. <laughs> and it just feels a bit, um, I think everyone, when they sort of read that passage of, um, at the beginning where it's like, okay, we have two opals. If opal A dies, then opal B will just, you know, explode in a nuclear response. It's like, bitch. Just shoot Opal B, then when Opal A dies, and yes, I know they're fairies, they're magic, and she's in Atlantis and they're in Haven and no one kills anyone, but they literally put her inside a nuclear reactor. I think they could, you know, find a shiv somewhere. <laughs> uh, it just, a lot of the plot, plot points feel kind of contrived. It's like, um, Colfer wrote the ending, and then had the setup from the very end of book seven and then just had to kind of had to get from the beginning to the ending and just put whatever in the middle. Yeah. In sixth place, we have book six, The Time Paradox. I honestly, I kind of like this one. It's, it's not so bad. It's, it's a fun, it's a fun story. It, uh, it loses points for the fact that I had to reread so much of it because I did not get the plot. Like, I got the beginning of the plot and then I got a bit more and then I had to read the whole thing again when I got to the end. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, was this set up? Was this here? Was this here? It's, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's a paradox. It doesn't work. It's just completely confusing. I like the lemur. I like all the animals. I think it's kind of cool that Colfer took sort of through the whole the Holy Artemis situation and went somewhere with it in a way that we all know it's never going to go somewhere, but sort of just explored that like in universe in sort of just like a practical way without making it weird because you know in book one, like, he's 12 and she's 80. <laughs> Irregardless of, you know, approximations, he's still 12 and she's in maybe her 20s or whatever equivalent. But yeah, this one definitely loses points because 
if you even if it's like a weird paradoxical book and there's multiple plot lines I think your book you should be able to start someone should be able to start the book and finish the book and know what happened in the book without having to reread it and highlight bits and take notes so yeah in fifth place we have book two the arctic incident now this one is only in fifth place because I was like, okie dokie, the last three are out of the way. I love all these books mostly equally. I'm going to have to rank them now. And I thought, okay, one of them's going to have to take cut. Which one is it going to be? And I thought, hmm. 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 And it was, it was going to be this or the Opal Deception. And I thought, it's going to be this. Because in the end, this is, this is the reason we have the Artemis Fowl series, to be honest. Like, if this one had flopped, we never would have gotten a book three or a book four. It's like, book one was, you know, brilliant. But book two is the one that kind of catapulted the series. Um... But still, I don't really think I have any notes for book two, other than the fact that sort of surrounded by the rest of the series, it just, it actually kind of forget about it a lot because, you know, book one's book one, it's a self-contained story, and then all the sequels just have these escalating stakes. But book two's solid. We're going to take on the mob in Russia in winter. <laughs> They fought Russians in winter and they won. It's amazing. And then there's the whole um, Haven plotline, which is essentially a... It's a powerful corporate individual arming radicals to kill police officers and take over the world, which has absolutely no in any way links or connections to anything that's ever happened in real life, ever. Um, yeah, I'm not, not sure if I'll ever be able to reread that plotline quite the same way again, honestly. Mulch is fun. Um, all the characters are fun. I like the way that they just have Holly be genuinely mistrustful of Artemis. Because even though he's the main character, he's not a hero, especially at this point. So, like, yes, it's not all immediately forgiven and forgotten. He hurt her and she remembers and she's like, oh, fine, I'll work with the stupid mud boy. And he's like, eh, it's cold. <laughs> yeah. I like with each book, each continual successive book, Artemis is like, if I get out of this alive, I will exercise, I will learn kickboxing, I will gain muscle tone. And he never does. That is the most realistic and accurate human thing that has ever happened in an Artemis Fowl book ever, and I love it. In fourth place, we have book four, The Opal Deception. The Opal Deception is in fourth place because, um, well, it's not higher on the list because... It contains the pain and the sadness and the Julius dying. <sighs> but it's not lower on the list because it contains the truffles scene and I love the truffles scene. <laughs> I, I, I sort of love the whole the whole idea of humans becoming fairies, fairies becoming humans and sort of the interchangeability of dynamics because I'm pretty sure if, like, say anyone, like, hypothetically, like, imagine if, like, you know, Holly and Artemis did the horizontal tango in book six or in any book, any point when, you know, they're both of an age where it's, you know, okay. Like, I'm pretty sure their baby would be, like, a liger. Like, this is a weird hybrid kid and it's 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 not having kids of its own it's just there it exists scientists study it um i mean don't get me wrong like 
half elf, half human, adorable, interracial, interspecies, magical, genius baby. Perfect. But like Elvis has never happened. <laughs> We've got Miles and Beckett. We can we can stick with Miles and Beckett. Um Yeah. Again with this one, no notes. It it kind of does annoy me about how long it takes for Artemis to get his memories back. But ow. Why did I why did I do that? Ow. Uh, but again, it's fitting with his character. Like I said before, one thing I really like across this book is just character consistency. Each sort of character, even in the ones that I don't like so much, are just reacting both to the stuff that's in front of them, but they're also building on stuff that happened in previous books, which you don't always get in some series. Um, even though characters maybe age and relationships change and develop it's almost like each little story is a standalone story and everyone's starting at square A with Artemis Fowl, it's not like that. Everyone changes and develops and has this whole, like, everyone that's there for the whole series has these huge arcs of changing and growing and developing. I just think that's so neat. In third place, we have Book 5, The Lost Colony. This is such a good book! This is so good! It's, it's like... It makes me happy. Because the first four books were like in a self-contained universe. There was Haven, there was the Foul Manor, there were like these five characters. And like there were other characters. But there was like Holly, Artemis, Root, Foley, Mulch, Opal, Yeah, that's six. And like, there were other characters, definitely. Um, but you know, there's other fairies, there's other, there's the kelp sibling officers, there's Artemis's parents, there's the twins that work for Opal in book four. Like, there's other characters in the world, but like, the universe and the lore is very much set up in book one. And um, book five, sort of just completely changes that. It just adds this whole extra layer, this extra world, this extra species. Um, this whole sort of extra component of magic and component of the system and of history within the, within the realms. And it, uh, it's great. I think I've mentioned this before in this video. One of the other reasons I don't like some of the later novels so much is because they add new lore and they add new characters and they add all these extra situations and it feels shoehorned in. It does not feel shoehorned in in book five. <laughs> book five is just, we got new countries, we got Artemis with another little baby genius, we got Mulch has a friend. <laughs> Oh, it's amazing. It's just... It's good. It's, 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 it's a hundred percent good. The ending is, um... It's not my favourite ending in the whole series, but I think it works. In my head, uh, Butler was, you know, in a sad house by the sea for maybe a year, just, you know, being incredibly depressed and not remembering personal hygiene exists. But I think three years is a, um, yes, I know depression, I do know, depression and chronic fatigue and, uh, survivor's guilt can be horrible, but I think three years in exactly the same place is... Okay, it's not entirely unrealistic, but I think, it's not entirely unrealistic in general, but I think Butler as a person would probably have taken a look at himself maybe 12 to 18 months in at the latest and thought, okay, I'm going to have a shower and I am going to walk on the beach. 
because for what we hear he has like books that he reads he has a garden so in my head maybe the first little while he's processing his trauma he's feeling sad which I get I totally respect that and then maybe by the time year two year three rolls around and Artemis comes back he's like hey butler and butler's like this is my cute house with my books and my gym because he definitely has a gym um this is my garden this is my boyfriend because butler has a boyfriend in my head um because he didn't have artemis and he was lonely so he went out to a bar and he met a nice guy which i think is just very good of him so yeah that's that's my little that's the little head cannon that i'm giving all of you as a treat <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. In second place, we have book one, Artemis Fowl. I had a lot of thinking about first place versus second place, but then I remembered that this isn't me ranking them objectively or subjectively. This is just me ranking them based on how I feel and this book is so good it, it's it's great it's amazing and I love it I didn't the first time I actually read it I didn't read it I heard it as an audiobook and that's definitely um influenced the way I read it so I, I hear the voices in my head the same way the narrator says them which honestly just makes it so much better the story is impeccable, I have no notes, I have no suggestions, I have no extra anything. This is like, this is a masterclass on fun writing and this is a masterclass on making a fun, sympathetic villain with reasonable limitations. Okay? We don't want Artemis to win necessarily, but we definitely don't want him to lose. Because winning would mean, well, we don't really know what winning would mean most of the book, but losing would mean that, you know, everyone dies, which is gross and sad and horrible. But, yeah. This is a good book. This is a great book. This is a perfect book. I love it, and it's beautiful. And now. For the one, the only, in first place, we have book three, The Eternity Code. Oh, I love this book so much. I love this book so much. I have three copies of this book. Um, I genuinely don't know how that happened, I just do. It's, it's a great book. I like it the best because for me, the Artemis Fowl books are kind of grouped into sort of three categories. There's, so there's the first three, and there is a category, and then four and five are a category, and then the last three are sort of grouped together as well. So there's like these sort of three little eras of Artemis Fowl. So for me, this is sort of like the culmination of the original trilogy arc. So we have Artemis as the most evolved emotionally and socially we have we have we have a little bit of background commander root which i always love we have foley doing what he does best we have amazing mulch holly juliet banter which is great we have some genuine drama heartstrings moments poor butler and we have a villain who, A, is an excellent villain, who is very compelling and very evil, and who, B, isn't Opal freaking cowboy. I love Opal. I, I, think she's, I think she's the absolute best. She was great in book two. She was great in book four. She was weird in book six. She was a minor deity in book eight. But that does not change the fact that um, no matter how awesome she is, there's some, sometimes you want a little bit of 
Wow, I am not. I I do not have the 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 juggles the the, the juggling skills. Yeah. What was I saying? Oh yeah. It does not change the fact that sometimes you want a little bit of variety, and that variety comes in the name of a Chicago mobster named John Spyro, who absolutely sucks. And he he's fun. He's funny. There's there's cool little plot lines and subplots. There's mulch and that tiny mean Irish little bad guy. I'm trying so hard not to swear because these are technically children's books and I don't know who's watching this and I don't want YouTube to be mean to me. I'm just starting this channel out. But like, <laughs> is, okay, most of the cool little side plots involve mulch because he's great. Um, pecs and chips. <laughs> It's just, this is such a good book. I love this book. I've read this book so many times. If I want to read a random Artemis Fowl book, it will always be this book. Okay, sometimes it'll be book three or book five or book four. Okay, but it, it'll be any of the first five books, but it'll be definitely be this book. Like, no questions asked. So that's my ranking and rating of the original eight Artemis Fowl books. I really, really like them. Even the ones I don't like. I've read them all multiple times. I think they're kind of cool. I think they're neat. I kind of hope they make a movie one day, you know, of Artemis Fowl. It's a pity they haven't made a movie yet. Because when they do, it, it, it's definitely going to be, you know, a beautiful, true-to-life, respectful adaptation of maybe the first book or the first two books and some might actually work as a mini series as a story you know just little little episodes i'm not sure about that but yeah they should they should someone should totally buy the movie rights and make a movie and it would definitely be a really good movie and not some weird wrong thing Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you haven't read Artemis Fowl yet, you'll probably be very, very confused because I did not explain the plot well, and also it was completely out of order. And if you have read them, read them again. They're great. I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.